Okay, we're back inside the queue with a special uh, two-person uh, interview for Deep Sankaranti. Sankaranti? Sankaranti from eBay. And uh, Thomas Pan from eBay. You guys are in the search index group and all kinds of other uh, back-end uh, uh, capabilities for uh, eBay. Uh, eBay, obviously, big internet company. Web 1.0 company still around, I hear, doing some good work. Uh, still doing the auctions and doing a lot more e-commerce. Um, so share with us, uh, Pradeep, what's going on at eBay with HBase. This is HBase conference. It's very technical. A um, lot of alpha geeks here pushing the envelope around data store, all kinds of the, the classic storage challenges. However, in a real-time application environment, you need latency, low latency, and also need batch, you need real-time analytics, all that good stuff. So share with us um, what's going on at eBay relative to HBase. At eBay, we have been uh, rewriting our search engine, a uh, project called Cassini. Uh, We've been rewriting the whole search engine stack, which includes uh, the, the query nodes, uh, the query processing, the indexing platform, and the entire the data acquisition part as well. Uh, so for this project, we're using Hadoop and HBase. Uh, HBase is our repository for our indexing data, for our uh, inventory data. And uh, so we are building indexes of, out of HBase. So our repository is HBase. And uh, we, are, we have MapReduce applications which read uh, data out of HBase and uh, building indexes, both, we have two use cases. One is a offline use case, which is a batch use case, where we are building uh, uh, hourly indexes, and we have the real-time use case where uh, we have frequent updates coming into the system, like uh, things like bids, bins, which is the auction for the auction items, and uh, it could be things like uh, titles changing or any uh, inventory uh, data changing. So those are going through the real-time pipeline. So we are we have to support like uh, very low latency, like you mentioned, and high volume of uh, data. Uh, that's what we have been currently working on. Uh, so we've been using HBase. Uh, we have about uh, one and a half petabytes of data, uh, inventory data, and uh, so this is what we are we are currently working on with respect to HBase. Thomas, you're the principal engineer over there, so. Uh he just tells you what you do. So explain to us what you do. What's your, what's your role uh, with an eBay? Uh, so my role in the team, basically I work with the team, come up with the whole pipeline architecture and just work on that uh, to carry out, uh, to basically implement the whole pipeline. Uh, that's basically my role. So what what do you what's your core uh, challenges that you guys have uh, overcome? Obviously, in Hadoop, it's a lot of complexity. Um, there's a lot of challenges, but you know there's dividends there. What have you worked on that you can share with the folks out there that's been challenging uh, around some of the complexities? But uh, I think the first challenge is basically the learning curve is very steep. So uh, you go into Hadoop HBase world, uh, suddenly instead of having uh, one simple configuration file, you have multiple configuration files. Each file contains uh, hundreds of configuration parameters. So you have to understand uh, most of them to a certain extent. And then you ha also have the monitoring system capture so many matrices. And you have to figure out which ones are uh, very important. And, and on top of that, because there is ra rapid development happening in the community, so unless you can hold the programmer introduce the feature, sometimes when you bump into bug, it's very hard to, to get the support. So, so we just go through this whole bumpy road, and I think that the whole team is, is getting there to maybe to the level of Cloudera support level. So Pradeep, share with us. So basically what he's saying is um, it's a steep learning curve, but this payout because you actually give a different value proposition. Can you share with us, one, some of the value you've extracted out of, out of that investment of, of labor? And then what do you guys do to make it easier around hiring new people to actually write code? Because if it's a steep learning curve, you know, more and more people, that's why this is sold out. A lot of people want to, want to learn more. The community's growing. So the value you're extracting and then some of the things that uh, you're working on to continue to overcome those challenges. So like Thomas mentioned, we went through, uh, initially when we started with HBase, we went through some initial growing pains. Uh, uh, just the stability of the product was also kind of uh, not that great, but over time, I mean, the stability has gone and come a long way. Um, we were able to, like, uh, we built a lot of knowledge around how to operate the system as a from an operational perspective and managing the system. So those are some of the learnings. I mean, it's also like help from the community. I mean, a lot of help from the community how to manage the system and um, uh, how to maintain our clusters, how, what, are, what are the kind of things you want to monitor, and uh, 
um, alert on those kind of things. So those are a lot of things we learned on, and um, I mean uh, the community has been a big help. Uh, so and uh, actually, uh, since we were the first groups, at, one of the first group at eBay to like start uh, using HBase. I mean we kind of built up this knowledge base, and there are a lot of other teams in uh, eBay starting to adopt, trying to. Uh, uh, use HBase and they come to us and uh, reach out to us. Um. So my question is one, um, Cloudera has been a pioneer in the space for, for since the, the founding of uh, uh, of the commercial Hadoop for, for that lack of a better one, I don't want to on the community because it's been around for a while with Doug Cutting, et cetera. Um, but Cloudera has been making some good improvements. What have you guys done uh, with Cloudera and um, specifically to HBase um, why is HBase better than, say, Mongo or some other approaches out there? And, um, and, and it's not a political, a conversation is a legitimate question. Is there a use case that HBase far and exceeds those other guys? So talk about, the, do you work with Cloudera? We do work with Cloudera. And the, uh, so we do work with Cloudera, and uh, like during our, I mean, um, like I said, initially when we started last year, we had a lot of issues with the cluster, I mean, uh, getting the product to uh, function as we re as we required, and uh, uh, there are a lot of things uh, we work together on stabilizing the. I mean, we identified a lot of issues, and we asked Cloudera to fix it, and uh, we went back and I mean, we had a, uh, a close uh, interaction with the Cloudera team. A uh, couple of Cloudera members, like Todd, uh, we interact with them, and um, they helped us out a lot uh, with some of our. Um, uh, requirements. What about the other approaches, like Mongo? And um, actually, we were uh, we didn't go. We didn't actually investigate Mongo or uh, Cassandra. Uh, we were basically. I mean, our previous version of uh, search indexing platform is using Oracle, uh, so that is still serving our live live site. But because of the volume, I mean, uh, the rate at which we wanted to index, and also the um, the volumes at which we wanted to index, uh, so HBase was the way to go. So, uh, so we've been sticking to HBase uh, since then. Yeah. Okay, Thomas, I got to ask you the uh, question around um, challenges. We were talking with Christoph Brasilia, and he's talking about you know there's a long list of things that entrepreneurs can work on out there. The tools are, are, are hitting the scene, but it's still growing. It's early, but there are benefits that we heard from from a lot of folks. Um, what are the core challenges today with HBase in terms of um, that need to be addressed and not in a negative way, just the evolution of HBase because obviously there's a lot of successes with HBase, but still, um, like you said, it's a steep learning curve. There's not a lot of people who can program with HBase. Um, APIs aren't standardized on. There's a lot of sets of things. So talk about the challenges and then tell me your wish list. Like what was your like, you know, magic wand, I want these five features. <laughs> actually, we, we, we actually we, we want a lot of features. Uh, we still believe that the, I think the main big gap part in the edge base part is if you compare to Oracle or you compare to MySQL, all these things have been out in, in, in live uh, many, many sites for so many years. So in ca case people don't know that when eBay come on board, we pick up Oracle as our database solution. And we actually, through the whole past so many years, we help Oracle to improve the quality of their database. So uh, first, we are pretty confident on the edge-based solution. Um, after more than one year, play with that, and we become more and more confident, and we're more familiar with the code base. But we still think that there is a huge gap in the production level. So in case you got outage, you have some hardware failure or network failure, causing the whole cluster to be not usable for a period of time, then how you quickly uh, patch the data and make it online again, right? Even though you have a multiple colo as a DR scenario, you will still have the problem to quickly restore a bad colo back online. So that, I think, uh, since we haven't really put the whole, production, uh, whole product in production yet, there will be a lot of challenges down the road. And another part is that because community is still adding more features into the code base, uh, when you add a new feature into the code base, it will take time to mature. It that means that once you officially release a version, it's bug free. So there will be some challenge you need some time to bake the code. And, and we, we're still learning that, work with Cardera, 
and I think we're getting better and better. Okay, Pradeep, do you want to add some, some comments to that? Yeah, some more. I mean, a couple of comments is like um, high availability and reliability, right? I mean, uh, this is a 24 by 7 operation. We, we want our clusters to be up all the time with no downtime. Um, our uh, uh, tolerance for downtime is very small, right? I mean, uh, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of end users getting affected, a lot of people's livelihood getting affected if there's any downtime. So that's a critical part for us. So we want the features I would request are like things like high availability, more reliability. Those are the things, uh, uh, those are the top requests. Okay, so here's a question for you. So uh, philosophical question. So HBase, Hadoop, okay, I buy that. It's clustered, it's coupled together in, in at least in a, from a relative, like, you know, brother, sister, cousin, uncle family perspective, Mongo and other approaches are different. Um, so people are buying into that. Also, there's some use, specific use cases around um, uh, uh, key, key uh, pair stores and, um, and whatnot. But now you have batch, right? You, some people love the batch. They want to do real batch uh, on, on commodity hardware. You brought up the issue around um, hardware failure, cluster failure. We heard from Kartik from Facebook say, you know, here's how they deal with replication, and it's not always that clean. They don't authorize anyone to do any app development yet. It's kind of the command and control, which is cool. I get that. So it's just different. So you got batch, very well received. Now you got real time, and everyone wants analytics. So throw that in the mix to just the things that you said. So your wish list looks good on straight on paper, just on the batch side, it's going to be hard. How do you see the real time affected? Because you get batch in real time. So um, so like I said earlier, the, our primary use case are batch and real time. So uh, so the batch, um, from the batch point of view, I mean, HBase and Hadoop, I mean, it's providing us what we need. From the real time, also, we are working on the currently we are working on the real time application, and uh, we are using Hadoop, I think, uh, uh, for uh, getting our real time indexes as well. Um, so there may be some more tweaks which need to be made from the application side and the um, the Hadoop side as well to get our real time uh, flow working. We are still working on that, and we are pretty close. I mean, we are able to solve most of the. Using Mahout at all? Using Sorry. Mahout at all? No, we are not using Mahout. So. Uh, no, we don't. That's still yep. on the batch. Yeah. So we, I mean, um, yeah, for a real time, we still go back to HBase, um, get the data, and index, I mean, index the real time uh, streams as well. Okay, we're here with Pradeep and Thomas. Uh, final question for each of you, then we'll bring in our next guest, the uh, the new VP of Engineering Cloud Air, which is the big announcement for uh, for Cloud Air this week. Uh, final question, um, and Pradeep, you might be able to share this because I don't know if Thomas was there, but the initial Hadoop World in New York City um, was kind of a groundbreaking event because it was the first Hadoop World, um, and we didn't know, no one really knew what to expect. We had the Cube there live and it was fun, but it was packed house, a lot of tech, tech geeks, and some business was really the first kind of event where you had a commingling of geeks and business people. So, um, talk about what's changed in the community in the marketplace just in the in the in the two and a half short years um, in the evolution, both technical and just any observations out in the marketplace. I see there is uh, more inclination towards open source right now. I think there's a like you said, there's a mix of geek and the business groups, right? So maybe two and a half years back, I mean, the uh, open source was still a kind of, a, there was a lot of resistance, even two and a half years back. Um, eBay, I mean, it, it, there, there would be a lot of resistance for production-oriented applications for uh, using an open source product. But now, I mean, it's come a long way. Uh, it's become a norm, I mean, to use open source in most of the big companies. Okay, Thomas, you want to add to what you've seen change over the past few years? Uh, so the biggest change I'm seeing is basically momentum. Maybe two years ago, Edgebase is not, uh, it's basically far, was far from being productionized. And now it's so many companies using that. And I think the ma major breakthrough is actually happened last year when in the Hadoop sum, um, Facebook announced that their real-time platform is basically based on the, the Edgebase. So we're, we're pretty confi confident and comfortable with the progress that the open source community is making. 
Okay, Thomas and Pradeep from eBay. Great sec sec session here in the Cube. Um, thanks for sharing your knowledge and sharing that with the crowd. This is the Cube, our flagship telecast, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise and share that knowledge with everyone out there. Um, great example of a company that really is ops dev not DevOps. eBay can't go down. Um, they have a lot of money. If it goes down, people lose money, and that's not a good thing. Um, great to hear open source is making a real strong foothold at, in a production environment. I think that's a great trend, and, and thanks for sharing that. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest, the VP of Engineering, the new VP of Engineering at Cloudera, uh, right after this short break.